Hello everybody, my name is Paul Tace. In this video we're going to look to see whether it's worth getting any circular polarising filters. Let's get started. Okay guys, so as I said in the intro, we're going to be looking at polarising filters and if they're any use with the drones. Now it's worth pointing out here that in a lot of cases they will have no effect at all, but in these situations they're going to be really helpful. I'm going to be using a set of filters across all my drones. The Mavic Mini and the Mini 2 both use the same set of filters, but the Mavic Air 2 will use a different set. Now I've seen a lot of videos out there that actually misrepresent polarising filters. Uh, they'll show a picture with and without the filter and they both look exactly the same. And that's because they've missed the idea of the filter itself. So what does a polarising filter do? Now the purpose of a polarising filter is to reduce reflection in a non-metallic object. So if I use it here on this pane of glass, we can see that as I turn the filter around, we lose the reflection in the glass. Now that's not the only effect it'll have. Um, if you're facing 90 degrees away from the sun, it will make the sky appear darker. So here's a picture taken with the filter on. And then when we take it off, the same settings, so the same exposure, but we can see the sky looks a lot lighter. Now if we shoot facing straight towards the sun, we'll see there's no difference in the sky between the two shots, whether the filter's on or off. So to make the sky dark for maximum effect, you need to shoot at a 90 degree angle away from the sun. Now here we have a uh, light source reflected from straight behind me, and when we change the polarising filter, we can see the reflection is exactly the same whether the filter is on, or whether it is off. Uh, now we definitely know that the filter's working, because if we look at the cupboard here on the left, we can see when it's on, there's less reflection on the cupboard, and when it's off, we've got the reflection on the cupboard. This is because light is polarised more when it is reflected at a slight angle, rather than at a head-on angle like 180 degrees. So if I move the light around, so I'm shooting at more of a 45 or 90 degree angle, when the filter's on, we can see there's less light, and when it's off, we can see it's reflected a lot more light. Okay, but you're not going to want to be shooting at home and shooting through windows. However, having said that, I do have a video about things you can do with your drone at home, and check that out in the link below or in the top right hand corner now. But back to shooting outside, the place we're really going to see this is a lot with water. Now I took this picture just after the rain had stopped, and as you can see with the filter on, we've got a nice clear picture, and when the filter goes off, we've got a lot more of a harsh reflection. And again, this puddle with the filter on, and then again, when we switch the filter off, it's a lot brighter and there's a lot more glare coming through. Now, if we look at this footage, we can see as we're flying over the pond in the background, you can see very little of the clouds. When I fly over with the filter off, you can see that when we get to the water, the clouds are a lot more prominent. So we can see that uh, when the filter is on, we get less reflection of the clouds, and when the filter is off, we get more reflection of the clouds. And again, I just want to point out that no other settings have changed. So why might you find this useful? Uh, when I was in New Zealand, I took this picture in a Wanaka, and um, as you can see in the foreground, uh, you can't really see what's under the water too much. If I'd put a polarising filter on here, you would see all the pebbles, you'd have a really nice colour, really nice pattern from them, and I've completely lost that because I don't have a polarising filter on. So when you're somewhere with really nice clear water, a polarising filter will actually help you see through it and see what's underneath it. If you're somewhere with really grubby water like the UK, um, you won't be able to see through it, but it will help reduce the glare on the waves. So here we can see with the filter on, we haven't got a terrible amount of reflection coming from the sun, catching the highlights in the waves. When we take the filter off and shoot the same footage, we can see there's a lot more reflection coming, so it looks a lot nicer and a lot clearer with the CPL filter on. So here is my Sunny Life filter set. Most of these are NDs, but I do have one polarizing filter. Now it's worth pointing out that obviously if you've got a polarizing filter on, you can't put an ND filter on as well. And in my opinion, an ND filter would be more useful than a polarizing filter. So what we can do is we can have a look at these filters here, and these are polarizing and ND filters all in one. So what we've got is an ND8, an ND16, and an ND32, and one with no ND filter at all. And unfortunately, in this set there is no ND4, which is a bit annoying if we want to be shooting at golden hour. What I particularly like about this set is it's got a variable ring on the front, so we can rotate how much we want to be polarised and how much we want it not to be polarised, and it's easier to turn on and off than it would be taking a filter on and off. 
I also found the polarizing filter from the Sunny Life set was slightly darker than having no filter at all. This meant it was hard for me to compare a shot with the filter on and the filter off because the exposure changed as well as the amount of polarization. And then if we have a look here, these are for the Mavic Air 2. And again, these are all polarizing filters. Again, in this one, we don't actually have a polarizing without an ND filter, but we do have an ND4, an ND8, an ND16, and an ND32 polarizing filter, which actually nicely fills in the slots if you bought the Fly More combo of the filters that are missing. As in the Fly More combo, you don't get an ND4, 8, or 32 filter. You do, however, get an ND16 filter, so I thought I'd compare the two. This shot was taken with the filter supplied by DJI, and this shot is taken with the ND16 polarizing filter that we got from banggood.com. If we compare them together, we can see the colors are very similar. Um, the sky is slightly darker in the banggood.com ones, but that's because I've left the filter on. So with that in mind, I feel that the banggood filters are definitely very good value, particularly when compared to a much more expensive filter. As light from an LED screen is polarized, I decided to quickly show you what it was like over an LED screen. Uh, we can see at the moment the uh, filter is turned on, but as we spin the ring, it starts to turn it off. When we get the filter 90 degrees around, it will be switched off entirely. And then if we spin it around to 180 degrees, it'll actually be turned on again. And again, we can see the same thing happens with the ND filter for the Mavic Air 2. Now again, I did particularly like this for the fact that I could keep the exposure the same. I don't have to keep swapping an ND filter with a polarizing ND filter, and it was just more convenient for me to fly. If you're interested in any of these products, I'll leave a link in the description down below. There are a few variations you can order, so just check your order and exactly what you want before you hit the confirm button. But I found at about £30 for polarizing and ND filters, this wasn't bad at all. Now the ones for the Mavic Mini will also fit on the Mini 2. And to install it, all you do is turn the head down and clip it on and clip it into place. From there, you can then spin the filter to make sure you've got it set to how you like it. When the dot is in line with the line, the filter is on. And when it's 90 degrees away, it is off. It's also worth pointing out that this does not push it over the 250 gram mark. For the Mavic Air 2, take off the frame that's already on there by twisting it anti-clockwise. Then pick up the replacement filter you want to use. I'm going to use the ND32 polarizing filter. Uh, push it into place and then twist it clockwise and it's on and ready to go and again from there you can twist it around to make sure that the filter is in the correct position and lastly just make sure the lens is completely clean so just to summarize um, if you do fly a lot over water it may be worth looking into getting some polarizing nd filters and i just mentioned again that i prefer the variable ones because it means we don't have to keep switching between polarizing and non-polarizing filters that's it for this video and i hope to see you in the next one